Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and welcome to No Budget Reviews, the series where we go around the country finding cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and filming them with absolutely no money at all. So we have to use my phone, no microphones, no fancy DSLRs, nothing like that. Just good honest cars that you can buy for very little money and you can enjoy driving. Well, viewers, I have a treat for you today. We don't often get cars of quite this calibre on no budget reviews, but this is a 1985 Austin Maestro 1.6 Vanden Pla automatic. I apologise if I say Vanden Pla and not the way that you like, that's just the way that um, I've been saying it for years. If that's not the right way, um, then I apologise to just get that out of the way. Sorry if the lighting's not particularly good, this spot that we're in. These maestros are getting really rare now. You can't quite buy a Vanden Plaar in this sort of condition for £1,000, but you can buy a maestro still with an MOT in fairly good condition for £1,000. I can prove that because um, the other day, a 1.3L, which was one above the base for the maestros, um, actually... Um, came on eBay and sold for £960. So if you want a Maestro and you want a nice one, then now's the time to get hold of one before they become increasingly, increasingly difficult to actually um, get hold of for decent money. I'm very uh, blessed to have been offered this by Callum, who actually brought this to the BMC Leyland Show in Gaydon, but you would have seen on the slightly shambolic shuffles. My grandfather had about five of these maestros. Not the Vanden Plaas so much. Um, sometimes he had others. The ones I remember most are the Vanden Plaas he had, which was a, um, a sort of post-86 one, which had the different dashboard in it. This has the talking dashboard in it, which is what people often remember about maestros. And uh, the Vanden Plaas was the top of the normal range of maestros. There were um, MGs as well which uh, you'd argue were maybe more desirable these days. Top of the range, of course, was the MG 2-litre turbo. We'll take a look in the back. One of the great things about a Maestro is a practicality. And compared with something like a, an SD3 Rover 200, just so much space in here. It's a bit kind of dumpy on the floor and things, but it's not too bad. The boot floor in this car is actually really good. Cosmetically, it's not 100% yet. Uh, Callum has been working very hard to make it good. See, the boot floor is really good. Um, nice tyre in there too. When he got this car, it had been a, um, on a farm in a, and in a barn for about 15 years. So it's worked very hard to get it back to a very good standard. Still a few things to do. Paintwork's not perfect on it, but it's mostly original. This is the original dealer plate, came from Wembley originally, back in 1985. And I think we've still got some original Unipart Maestro mud flaps on them. This car, annoyingly, doesn't have power steering. It's an automatic, but there's no power steering. That, amazingly, was an optional extra. And the steering is just as heavy as a Volkswagen Polo G40. Incredible sort of early 80s luxury wooden door caps or veneer, I should say. Nice kind of cloth trim. Later, Van den Plaas, after 86 or February 86, we changed the dashboard in them, um, had a full leather interior. This does not, but we do, I think, have a leather steering wheel. Early type Maestro um, two spoke wheel. Every type of the um, column stalks, they look a bit like metro ones, but I wouldn't be sure about that. Light switch is down here, and it feels very, very flimsy. Heat and ventilation controls, again, they're a little bit like an early metro. And, uh, you know, they look simple enough to operate. Oh, yes, yes, the talking dashboard, come back in a second. Volkswagen three-speed automatic gearbox. Big 
glove box of all kinds of bits and pieces. Enormous number of vents, um, but I think there are about five. About five and then two very tiny ones. I'm not sure I'd actually call that seven. Just look at the interior fabric in here, it's lovely. The dashboard was replaced because it's a multi-part dashboard and it squeaks a bit. We will, you know, when we go for a drive, we'll see if that's true. Original radio in it as well, which does work apparently. Just things like this um, interior door handle, the locking knob and everything, I just remember so well. And a uh, pan brake grip. I have been offered a, a sort of um, later Mayfair, which was made for um, a couple of years as well. It's like a one step down from a VDP. But yes, uh, why don't we look under the bonnet? This is the 1.6 S series engine, uh, derived from the earlier terrible R series engine that really wasn't ready for production, but some reason they threw it in anyway because they ran out of time before they were launching the Maestro. Uh, but derived from the earlier E-Series engine, which is available as a 1.5 and a 1.75 litre. This is a 1.6, it generates about 85 horsepower. It's got a carburetor on it as opposed to fuel injection. The uh, two litres were electronic fuel injection, but this is uh, much older technology in that way. It's actually quite a smooth engine, I'm quite surprised. Volkswagen um, end on gearboxes in a Maestro. Lots and lots and lots of space to work in here. Uh, everything's actually original in here, including that washer bottle, which I found to be pretty amazing, really. Brake master cylinder is looking a little bit worse to wear. That's clearly been on a farm, but that's okay, it does work. Yes, yeah, just amazed how straight this car is for the, for the age, really. Just get in the back. Gosh, those door handles are just as stiff as I remember. Headline is sagging a bit in the back. That's finest sort of Austin Rover tradition. But actually, legroom's pretty good. It, it feels a lot more spacious than like a, an SD3 200. If my other grandfather had an SD3 200. And there's just not much space in them as, uh, as in something like this Maestro. But again, it's very comfortable. The visibility in this car is amazing. Another feature for Maestros would be the uh, adjustable height seat belts. It's pretty, it's pretty nice in here, really. I like it. Okay, let's sum it up, um, Nicolette McKenzie. Warning, low oil pressure. Warning, brakes require service. Warning, high engine temperature. Warning, battery not charging. Warning, low fuel. Low fuel. Handbrake on. Lights on. Time. Trip distance. Average fuel consumption. Instantaneous fuel consumption. Fuel used. Clear. What you can do Time. also is just Trip. press Distance. these buttons individually and um, fuel used. that is broken. Fuel consumption. Average fuel consumption. I don't think I'm doing 91 miles per gallon, unfortunately. Um, but nevertheless, we've got digital readouts feels a bit like kit from Knight Rider, but actually this car was launched March 83, so mm, I think the uh, series was in production already in 82, so I, I don't think it actually did inspire kit from Knight Rider, which is a shame. But uh, other controls are here, wash wipe and fog lights and heated rear windows. Um, whoops, not the camera there. And then hazard warning lights are over here for some reason. Cigarette light is all the way over there, which uh, is a bit of a stretch, but overall, you know, <laughs> these cars are so rare. I mean, there's maybe, what, 12 Vanden Plaas left taxed in this country. Just extraordinary. 
Right, I suppose we better go for a little drive. Right, no power steering, three speed Volkswagen automatic gearbox. Don't know what the 0 to 60 time is on this, I don't think it's very good. Engines available in Maestro were the famous A series or A plus series. Now that developed something like 68 horsepower, unless you're looking at the HLE, which was 64 horsepower. Earlier HLEs only got a four speed gearbox, later ones had a five speed gearbox. All Volkswagen units end on gearboxes. Probably that five speed unit, similar to one I had, had in the um, Volkswagen Polo G40 that I reviewed all the way back in, um, in December. Suspension in the Maestro, so it's, it's a McPherson strut arrangement in the front and then it's a torsion beam at the back. I actually used a version of the Maestro rear suspension in the R3 series Rover 200 and that is a car that I think you're going to be seeing quite soon on no budget reviews. Then uh, above the 1.3 was this 1.6. First of all the R series. Now that developed about 81 horsepower. The VS series, they fixed everything, we fixed all the problems with it, and that then developed 85 horsepower. The MG version was slightly different. The MG version was actually only made until I think October 84. Then it was uh, pushed up to a 2 litre. And the 2 litre engine developed 115 horsepower. That's the fuel injected unit. Then there's the turbo, which is insane. 140, 152 horsepower. And that is a lot more power than the Escort RS turbo, incidentally. There are also some diesels, the Perkins Prima direct injection unit, but as you know, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. Let's just test some handling here. Actually, the steering, because it's got no power assistance, is um, it's pretty direct actually. There's a little bit of float from the suspension, but then again, this car is <laughs> it's very, very, very old. We're talking of 35 year old car, so expecting it to feel like a modern one is um, not really going to happen. We've got a bit of whistle from this window. Um, one of the but he's come to say is um, there's a bit of loose trim on this door. So if you can't really hear me, then I apologise. Wow, it's a massive tractor. Oh, the brakes are okay. I think we're, um, I think we're uh, discs on the front and drums on the rear, aren't we, Callum? Yes. Yeah. Additional speedos keep me in a, in a nice sort of steady speed here. Right, I think we'll just go a little bit further down and then we'll find someone to turn around. It's been telling me that 0 to 60 in this car is about 14 seconds and I think I believe him. It's not the fastest thing, but it's probably a bit faster than the A series was. And actually, now we've uh, got a tractor in front of us, viewers, so uh, we're not going to be going too fast. The dashboard is not rattling too much at the moment, probably because the road's pretty smooth here. I'm sure, if we were to go and find some potholes, it would making some nasty noises. Well, there we go, there's some rattling for you. Apologise for the mount being in the way and the slightly strange camera angle. It's just the way it goes on no budget reviews really. Oh, kick down. 
<laughs> right, I'd be very careful here because I still really can't see anything. One thing about this car is the, the mirror adjuster. I think late cars, some of them did have electric mirrors. This one certainly doesn't. But the mirror adjustment is really quite poor and you can't get it to a stage where you can actually see or anyway from, from, from my own vision the driver's mirror doesn't adjust very well so in terms of me seeing before I overtake it's not really going to happen so we're going to have to go slowly and pretend I've got a tweed cap on and um, I'm the original owner of this car Mr Reginald who uh, bought it as a retirement gift to himself I gather and uh, just channel my inner retiree because uh, that's what my grandfather was when he had all those um, those maestros. He was a retired person. Okay, well the tractor's now turning off, so I'm going to go down to zero, probably down to sixty. Right, go. A lot of noise, but only marginal forward movement. Certainly the Volkswagen Polo behind me is looking very surprised at my slightly rapid progress. Yeah, we'll have to abandon that because there's a bumpy corner coming on. We get some more dashboard rattles for you going as well. Oh, there we go. Lots more dashboard rattles. Lots more dashboard rattles. A surprisingly pleasant uh, car to drive, really. The handling's actually okay. It's, it's it's fine. I can see why they decided to base an MG version on on this platform because it's pretty good. It's just a nice kind of unassuming car that you can fit your family in, really. see absolutely now why my grandfather just had one maestro after another and he just didn't want to buy anything else. Having had a couple of R8s myself, uh, 1991 216 SLI automatic and a 1996 uh, 216 SLI automatic that was really held back from production by a year. They're a very different type of car. Oh, we've got a whiny gearbox going on here. Right, we'll just park up and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about some maestro facts and also look at some trim levels. Now there were a vast number of trim levels um, available in the maestro which had a very long production life because after they finished making it in Cowley in 1994 and I actually went round Cowley in 1994 as I think an 11-year-old as far as I remember because I had a uh, a friend who was a dealer principal of a Honda garage in Southampton, a um, friend of my mother's and he invited me to go along. He and some of the local um, southern dealers had organised a trip round Cowley and I saw these coming off the production line in 1994 which was right near the end of um, production but um, after they finished making these cars a uh, Bulgarian company called uh, Rodicar actually requested that they ship the tooling and assembly line over to Bulgaria Varna I think it, the place is called and actually continue assembly there the cars were sort of Clubman style trim and they were a complete disaster. They were going to be brought over in in, uh, in knockdown kits, and they didn't sell very many of them. But a lot of them were left over. So what happened is that some of the cars that were made in Bulgaria came back over here. I think they were sold by a company called um, Apple Two Thousand, Barry St Edmunds, and then the remainder of the kits. I think there were about seven hundred of them were assembled by um, Apple Two Thousand sometimes, and also. Parkway services in Ledbury in Worcestershire and you actually see Maestros on anything from a Y plate which would be early 83 right the way through to a 51 plate which was late 2001 because um, 
the Lebri Maestros, as they're called, were being made as late as that. Production actually continued in China um, with Toyota engines and uh, Montego front ends and different styling and things a little bit later as well. So the car had a very long life, although it wasn't really designed to go much beyond about 88. And indeed, there was a, a major update in about 88. Um, it's not really a facelift because the really late cars, the, the sort of Clubman spec, uh, have the sort of non-plastic uh, bumpers like this one. So anyway, uh, let's uh, now look at um, the trim levels. Uh, base, L, LE, HL, HLE, HLS, LX, City, City X, Special, Clubman, SL, Mayfair and Vanden Pla. Obviously then there's um, MG uh, 1600, MG 33 FI and MG Turbo as well. Some Maestro facts that I've been um, supplied with by the Maestro Montego Metro Appreciation um, Club on Facebook. The plastic bumpers use the same material as a Sinclair C5. That's pretty interesting. Um, you can change the talking dashboard language on left-hand drive cars. Obviously not on this one. The first production car, the bonded windscreen. We've still got a bonded windscreen in here. Um, the standard dashboard was the first one with illuminated needles. That was the pre-86 one. Uh, Margaret Thatcher drove around my dining street. I'm sure she was very proud of it. And um, it was designed by um, Ian Beach under David Bash, or, or it might be Bash. Um, I can't remember exactly how you say his name. Uh, but yes, some fascinating maestro facts for you. So that concludes uh, yet another episode of No Budget Reviews. Should you get your hands on an Austin maestro or just a maestro after 1988 because the Austin name disappeared? Well... You're, you're kind of talking to the wrong person if you think I'm going to criticise this car too much because I love these cars. I've wanted to actually own one for quite a long time and, you know, if, if I can get my hands on an example like this, I just prefer the uh, slightly later design with some of the two-tone paint and the later dashboard. So I'd probably go for um, a, a Mayfair or an SL or something uh, myself or a, or a late uh, VDP that has leather in it. Um, but this has just been a privilege and a half to, to drive this car. Um, if you really want a Maestro, now's probably time to get them. There's not a lot of them left. And, um, you know, the prices are going up every day, it seems. But thank you once again to Callum for offering me the chance to film this incredible car. Um, I'm just really, really, really happy that after about 18 months of um, asking, I've actually had managed to get hold of one of these. And... This is not the, lo the last um, Maestro, Montego or Metro you're going to see on the channel. Absolutely not. So thank you once again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Don't forget to like this video and to leave a comment below. If you wish me to source a car for you, it doesn't have to be a Maestro, it could be um, something else, of course. Um, then get in touch via my website www.lloydvehicleconsulting.co.uk uh, Also I've got a Facebook page facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting Thank you